In this lesson we cover standard shader. This is the most powerful shader in Arnold, capable of producing all types of materials and shaders like plastic, metal, wood, gloss and others. Now this is the scene we are going to be working with. Let me run the IPR and get out of the camera. We have an Arnold sky with the intensity set to 0.52 three area lights as you can see with different colors and settings you can check them out and see what settings I've used we have this huge backdrop as you can see a sphere an abstract 3d object and a gloss geometry which is hidden right now and let's get back to the camera let me show you the render settings also I haven't changed my sampling at all all of my ray depth values are set to 2 uh, also, we come back here and change them if needs be. First of all, let's create a standard shader from your material manager. Go to create menu, Arnold, surface and click on the standard shader. Let's apply it to our sphere and our abstract object. As you can see, the material preview for the standard shader we just created is block. That is because we have IPR running and as soon as I stop my IPR, we should be able to see the material preview. Let's run IPR again and open up the newly created standard shader. Now let's talk about the diffuse section. First of all, you have color. Obviously here you can define the overall color and basically the main color of your shader. I can change it to this pinkish color maybe or maybe this bluish color also you can use a texture so to do that let's open up the network editor and the workflow I'm showing you here is uh, universal for whenever you want to add a texture to an attribute and control an attribute with a texture you do it this way so let's open the network editor as you know from our previous lessons you can simply search for an image node on the left side let me just drag it here and connect it to the color attribute of the diffuse section an easier way would be to select the standard shader press ctrl shift and T now you have this pop-up menu go to the main diffuse and select color now you need to select the texture you want to apply to the color of the diffuse in this case I'm just going to select this wood texture now as you can see we have a new image node and it is connected to the color of the diffuse so basically the color of our diffuse is being controlled by this texture and if I control double click on the standard node you can see this connection a bit better let's run IPR again and you can see the texture clearly on the sphere also let me select the texture tag apply to the abstract object here and change the projection to cubic so we can basically see the texture that's how you can assign a texture to any attribute let's select the image node and delete it for the moment also double click on the circle beside color and this way we can delete the input also even though it's really not necessary as soon as you delete the uh, image deleted the image node uh, the color will be uh, set to the original now let's close the network editor stop IPR and run it again so we can see the preview of our shader next we have weight which is the weight of the diffuse basically how much of the diffuse portion should be visible so at zero this material has no diffuse portion and as I increase it we get more and more of our defined color or texture let's set this to 0.85 the next option is roughness which controls how rough the surface should be so as you increase this value the surface gets rougher so if you are making a concrete shader for example you need to increase this value and if you are making a plastic shader you need to keep it as low as possible Next we have backlighting which allows you to simulate translucent surfaces that allows light rays to go through it. Now let me get out of the camera and also let's create a plane object. 
make it a bit smaller and let me put it in front of this left area light. Now let me move the camera a bit, just uh, change its size also. And now let me apply my standard shader to this plane. And as you can see, as I increase my backlighting volume, you can see we are allowing more light to pass through this plane. Now to see the effect a bit better, let me connect a grayscale texture to the backlighting attribute. Open the network editor again. On the left side, search for an image node. Now drag it here. Let's load this texture called Windows. As you can see where the texture is blocked, the light can't go through and where the texture is white, we can see the light source uh, behind the plane really clearly. Now let me delete this image node, zero out the backlighting and also delete this uh, plane object. Now let me get back to the camera. Then we have this option called Fresnel Effects Diffuse. So whether the Fresnel gonna affect the diffuse or not. Basically Fresnel effect states that the strength of reflections on a surface is dependent on the viewing angle. When you look at a pool at, at an angle, you see more reflections. And if you look at it directly, uh, there would be less reflections from above. I mean, when you look at a watering pool, you see uh, the water much more clear. But if you look at it at an angle, there would be tons of reflection. Now we talk about this more in the specular section, but here to demonstrate the effect of the Fresnel Effects Diffuse option, let me increase the weight of the specular to about 0.2 and turn on the Fresnel Effect on the specular channel and increase the reflectance at normal to 0.25. No worries about these options, we're going to be discussing them later on in this lesson. Now let me show you two renders with and without Fresnel Effects Diffuse enabled. In the picture viewer, uh, in this one Fresnel Effects Diffuse is disabled and in the second one it is enabled. The effect is very subtle in this case but if you take a close look at the sphere and compare these two renders, at the one that is enabled the diffuse contribution of the shader is more apparent at the edges and less apparent and at the frontal angle but uh, at the one that is disabled uh, the diffuse contribution is evenly distributed. Now let me zero out my specular weight and reflectance at normal and turn off Fresnel. So we are back where we were. Then we have extended controls for our diffuse section. The first one is direct diffuse scale which is the amount of diffuse light received from direct sources only. As I decrease this volume, we are decreasing the effect of our direct light sources on the diffuse section of the shader. And the illumination you see on the shader right now is from the indirect secondary rays, which is being controlled with our indirect diffuse scale down here. If I zero out this too, we should see no diffuse contribution at all for this shader. Now let's increase our direct diffuse scale to 1 and now only the direct light sources affect the diffuse section of our shader. You can have these values to be more than 1. For example, let me set my indirect diffuse scale to 2. Now our indirect light sources will affect this shader twice as before. Let me set them to default values. Also let me zero out the diffuse weight and open up the specular section. Specular is direct and indirect reflections that can be mirror-like or blurry. Uh, we call the blur reflections in Arnold glossy reflections. Uh, the first option is weight, which controls the amount of reflection you want on the surface. As I decrease this value, there uh, would be less reflection, and as I increase it, there would be more reflection on the surface. Now, there is one very simple rule you need to remember. The overall weight of diffuse and specular should not be more than 1. So if I increase my diffuse weight, I need to decrease my specular weight to 0.3 to compensate for that. But if we have Fresnel turned on on our specular, 
uh, section, we can bend this rule a bit. Let's decrease the fuse weight and increase our specular weight to 1. We can control the color of the reflections and specular reflections. Let's select this red color for example. Now as you can see the reflection color has changed. I also can connect a, a texture to be used as my specular color if I wanted to. We talked about weight. Let's open the network editor, select the standard node and press Ctrl, Shift and T and select the specular weight and let's load the Dirt07 texture. Where the texture is fully white, the specular weight would be 1 and where the texture is fully black, the weight would be 0 and we are not going to see any specular reflections as you can see in the render and obviously if there was a, a mid value, a gray value, uh, the reflection would be based on that value, it wouldn't be uh, fully black or uh, fully white. Uh, a reflection amount on the surface would be based on the gray amount, so the reflection would be, for example, if we have a 50% gray color on our texture, the uh, reflection uh, or the weight uh, of the specular would be 50% uh, or 0.5. Now let's delete this image node and make sure the specular weight is set to 1 and also let's change the specular color to white. Next we have roughness which controls how sharp or blurry your speculars uh, should be. As I decrease this value we are going to get sharp mirror like reflections and as I increase it we are going to get rougher and blurrier specular reflections. Let me show you how we can control the roughness with a texture. Open the network editor for this shader, select the standard shader and press Ctrl Shift and T select the specular roughness here and let's load this checker texture. Let me select the image node quickly, go to the UV coordinates tab and increase scale U to about 2. So the texture will be applied a bit nicer on our sphere. If you uh, take a look at the IPR Basically, where the texture is white, we get rough reflections, and where it is black, we get sharp specular reflections. Let me change this checker texture to this dirt 07 texture quickly. And you can see the results in the IPR. If I wanted to invert the grayscale values of this image, we need to search for a ramp float or RGB node. You can use both of these nodes, but I personally use the RAM float node. Connect the image node to the input and connect the output of the RAM float node to the roughness. Select the RAM float node, right click on this curve area and reset it. Now select the first point and change its Y value to 1 and select the second point and change its value to 0. By doing so we have inverted the image and now the effect is quite obvious and you can create some great effects using this technique. Let's delete these nodes and also close our network editor. Okay, then we have an isotropy which controls how directional the surface reflections should be. By default it is set to 0.5 which means isotropic and the specular reflections are not directional. As I increase this value you can see how the highlights are stretching in a horizontal direction and as I reduce it to zero the highlights will be stretched in a vertical direction. Then we have the rotation which changes the orientation of the anisotropic reflection and as I change this value I am basically rotating my stretched out highlights. Obviously you can assign textures to both anisotropy and rotation and create some cool effects. Let me go inside the network editor again, select the standard shader and press Ctrl Shift T and select the rotation from the specular section. Now let's load this radial uh, texture. Let's just uh, select the image node and under the UV coordinate tab 
increase the U and V scales to 5 and let's get out of the uh, camera and get closer to our sphere. Let's uh, wait for IPR to clean the render a bit. Now we get this beautiful circular anisotropic effect that would be impossible to create without using a texture. There we go. Now let me delete the image node, close the network editor again and get back to my camera. Also let me reset our anisotropy to its default value. Let's reduce our specular weight to 0.5 the roughness to about 0.15 and change the diffuse weight to 0.5 also. Let's copy the diffuse color to our uh, specular color and change it to a slightly less saturated version of the same color. Now let's talk about Fresnel. We said Fresnel effect states that the strength of reflections on a surface is dependent on the viewing angle. The reflection increases as the viewer's angle of incidence. Let's enable the Fresnel. So if you look closely at the sphere, you can see the very edges are reflective and the frontal angles to our viewing direction are less reflective. As I increase the reflectance at normal, frontal angles to our viewing directions become more and more reflective but still the edges are more reflective compared to the frontal angles as you increase the uh, reflectance at normal uh, more and more you are basically making the Fresnel effect weaker and weaker and the reflection become uh, the reflection basically becoming even at all viewing angles so that is basically Fresnel let me zero out reflectance at normal and disable the Fresnel also, <clears throat> let's uh, change the specular and diffuse colors to white, zero out the diffuse weight and increase the specular weight to 0.8 and the uh, roughness to about 0.3. So as you come down, you can see we have some extended control like we had with uh, diffuse section. Uh, direct specular scale controls the amount of reflection received from the direct light sources. As I decrease it, the reflection of our direct lights become uh, the reflection of our direct lights become less visible. Indirect specular scale controls the amount of reflection received from the indirect secondary sources. You can see the effect when I change this value. Now to stay physically accurate, keep these values at 1. Let's reset these two to their original values. Thank you for watching this tutorial. It was a free sample from our course comprehensive introduction to Arnold for Cinema 4D. Also stay tuned for the second part of this tutorial. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. See you next time.